Now to a major ruling involving the Second Amendment. The Supreme Court struck down a New York law that required people to show a special need to carry a concealed gun in public. Here's CBS News chief legal correspondent Jan Crawford. Striking down some of the nation's strictest gun laws, the court emphasized the Second Amendment is not a second-class right. Writing for the 6-3 majority, Justice Clarence Thomas said concealed carry laws in New York and at least five other states prevent law-abiding citizens with ordinary self-defense needs from exercising their right to keep and bear arms. New York officials characterized the ruling as a blow to public safety. This decision has made every single one of us less safe from gun violence. My response to that is that's the same claptrap that they have been using for 20 years. But gun rights advocates like Tom King, who challenged the law, said it did nothing to solve the real problems of gun violence or stop mass shootings like the one in Buffalo. It's not the gun owner. It's not the carry p pistol permit holders. It's the criminals that are causing the, causing the violence and the gun problem in New York State. The ruling follows the court's 2008 landmark decision that individuals have a right to have a gun for self-defense in their homes. 43 states allow legal gun owners to carry concealed weapons in public. Half don't even require a permit. But New York, as well as five other states, went beyond standard permitting requirements and made gun owners prove they had a special need to protect themselves. In dissent, Justice Stephen Breyer, writing for the court's liberals, said the court's ruling severely burdens state efforts to pass laws that limit in various ways who may purchase, carry, or use firearms of different kinds. Now for more on this, I want to bring in Adam Winkler. He's a professor at the UCLA School of Law. He specializes in constitutional law, the Supreme Court, and gun policy. So it sounds like you are the perfect person to talk to about this, Adam. We appreciate you being here with us. Um, what did gun owners have to prove was a special need? Well, you had to prove that you had some individualized need for a firearm. Let's say you've been uh, stalked or your life has been threatened, or perhaps you carried a, 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 an unusual amount of jewelry or cash on you as part of your job. Uh, but uh, the court had previously said that under this New York rule, you couldn't get a firearm and carry it just because you wanted to be protected against criminals. Um, and the court now, the Supreme Court today, has struck down New York's law and will require many more people to be able to get concealed carry permits. Yeah, you know, it, it strikes me the last time the Supreme Court ruled on guns was in 2008. Can you take us through and explain how that decision factored into this ruling today? In 2008, the Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment does protect an individual right to have a firearm in your home for personal protection. Uh, and the question that was unanswered in that case is whether you also had a right to carry a gun in public. The court today answered that question in the affirmative. The court did say you, that states and cities can impose licensing requirements on those people who want to carry a firearm, uh, but that New York's licensing re regime, which was an effective ban for most people on the ability to carry firearms, went too far. And so uh, we're going to see plenty of battles in the future as states try to restrict concealed carry uh, and Second Amendment advocates challenge those restrictions. You know, Adam, you and I are both sitting in California, which has a similar law. You've got Massachusetts, New Jersey, a number of other states have similar laws. How will this ruling impact those of us here in the state of California and these eight, the seven other states? Well, I think it's, we're going to be impacted in two ways. Uh, one, our, we have similar concealed carry policies to New York, and those policies are going to have to be repealed uh, and new concealed carry, carry policies written. But it's also going to affect us in another way. The court's decision today was clearly a signal that the court is more interested in second-guessing gun safety regulations. And the kinds of gun safety regulations that are going to be called into question by the court in the coming years are most likely those in states like California and New York and New Jersey that have uh, relatively restrictive gun laws. Now, it's my understanding, you know, Governor uh, Gavin Newsom here in California called the ruling shameful, a dark day for America. Um, his attorney general said that they'll be working with the governor's office to try to answer some of the questions on this ruling. So we're not going to see changes overnight here, are we? We won't see changes overnight, but it's going to be quick. 
look, the Supreme Court has said that the policies similar to California's are unconstitutional. And you can be pretty sure that someone filed a complaint today challenging California's policies on the basis of the Supreme Court's ruling. The legislature really has to act with some haste here. Um, uh, otherwise, the courts might say, well, look, there's no laws in place that restrict concealed carry, and so anyone can carry a gun. I think that's going to be sufficient incentive for uh, Newsom and lawmakers in California and elsewhere to act promptly to adopt a new set of restrictions on concealed carry. Yeah, we'll see how fast they get to that. Um, as we heard, Justice Stephen Breyer, who dissented, said the ruling burdened state efforts to pass gun laws. Though you look at conservatives who say states still have a lot of options to regulate guns, we've got all this discussion in Congress happening right now. Can you explain what other requirements states can still exercise at this point? Well, one thing that the Supreme Court said in this opinion was that the only gun laws that are constitutionally permissible are the kinds of gun laws we had in the 17 and 1800s or laws that were sufficiently similar to those laws. And that really calls into question a number of gun laws, um, and not least of which the Senate Compromise Bill, which includes funding for red flag laws. But we didn't have any laws like red flag laws in the 17 and 1800s. And so that's a kind of law that might be called into question uh, in the coming years. We'll just have to watch. Adam Winkler, thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us.